culture that values profit more than human beings. If we recognize the water is going to and you say, Lord, Lord, and He is in your Lord and Savior now, you're going to be sadly mistaken, my friends. And eternity is so serious. Eternity is so serious. You have to go back and do it again. Why are you being so hateful? Why so hateful? Why so hateful? Looks like we get uh, got a good congregation back there in the background listening. And as Ray Comfort said, uh, a good heckler's worth their weight in gold. Looks like we got some here. So good conversation going on. Get a gospel track, ma'am. Good news of Jesus Christ. Why the hate, ma'am? Why the hate? Get a gospel track, ma'am. Gospel track for you. Sing it. There's a good. There's a good heckler. Bring on the hecklers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is good. Here they come. There's the LGBT. So yeah. So yeah, Romans Romans one. As we were talking about this young man here, and I were talking about Romans one. Uh, there are two. The Bible talks about atheists in two ways. Is this one that they're fools, and then the other the other instance says they're without excuse. So would you want to be a fool without excuse? Did you get you get the other side there. Did you get the other side of the? Can you get a photo of the other side of the banner there? You want to get the other side too there? What's your positive? Yeah. We're just trying yeah. to get people into the SU without being bothered. What's your We're trying not to let people get bothered. Well, we're concerned. We, we love you. We love you, and that's why we're here. We want you to have eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And heaven is a, a place where there's no sin. And so... Um, if you're without sin, walk right on in. But have you sinned? Let me know. Let me know if you sinned. Oh yeah, yeah, it is. A, the Bible says that homosexuality is a sin. Do you know? Do you know the Bible at all? I do know the Bible. Oh, okay. Man should not lay with another man, but that is actually talking about like little boys. Oh, yeah. How do you know that? Because that's that actually is inaccurate. That's a wrong translation of that. So did you study Bible or something like that? Yeah, I went to CCD. Yeah. You did okay. Well, I'm sorry because you came out with a bad. Uh, well, what about First Corinthians six nine, where it says homosexuals will not inherit the kingdom of God? Why did I come out? What were you going to say? No, I said I'm sorry that you're wrong. You came out with a bad conclusion because there are bad translations. I, I, you know, there's bad, bad interpretations. They are bad interpretations. And you've had a bad interpretation of that. Of but we're concerned about that. So it's and it's not just homosexuals. Are you homosexual? Oh, I'm such a homosexual. Okay, I just wanted to ask. And we love you. We don't want you to go to hell. What? Well, because I'm just saying what the Bible says. The Bible says that homosexuality is a sin, but also lying is a sin. Have you lied before? 
Uh, yeah. Have okay, how about you? Have you lied? Have you lied? Of course, of course. I know better than you. I know better than I mean, like, you know, think of it like a beggar. I'm sorry. I'm a beggar trying to show other beggars where the bread is. That's all it is. You lied before, correct? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And that is a sin? It is, yeah. You fuck a man? Uh, I don't use that word, but no, would I would not. Sex with a well, man? You it's not really even sex. It's it's copulation. It's the no, sex. Man. Sex is between a woman and a man in that's in the mar in marital. That's not true. Yeah, yeah. So other anything other else than that? You know what the word fornication is? Fornication is sex outside of marriage. Have you done that before? Have you? Have you had sex with a woman outside of marriage? Oh yeah, yeah. Outside of marriage? Yeah. So oh yeah, I am a sinner. You're exact. Right. Thank you. Thank you. I, I am. Yeah. And I'm no better than you. I am like that beggar. I'm like that beggar who is is trying to show you where the bread is. And that's Jesus Christ. Jesus is the bread of life. Have, have you ever used God's name in vain before? Have you used God's name in vain before? So, so that's blasphemy when you use the name of the Lord our God in, in vain, like if you use Jesus Christ's name, you misuse it, bump your toe and say, oh, JC, or you say, oh, G-O-D, it's so cloudy, I don't like it today. You've used God's name in vain. Now, now, the the great thing, praise God, that we're not in a theocracy um, and we're not Jewish, so you don't get stoned to death for using God's name in vain. But that's the deal, folks. The, what's worse, getting stoned to death in the old covenant under under Israel, um, getting stoned to death, that's simply death. But now blasphemers will not inherit the kingdom of God. In other words, blasphemers will go to hell. And we don't want you to go to hell. And that's why we're, we're here because we love you. We're bringing a message of love so that... Quite possibly, God could grant you repentance even today and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, grant you eternal life. That would be awesome if he would do that. Man, that would be so, so wonderful. But we're not, we're not in control of that. God is the one, God is the one who, who allows entry into heaven through his son Jesus Christ and his shed blood on the cross in your stead if you're willing to repent and believe the gospel, which is that Jesus Christ died on the cross, was buried, and rose again. He was seen by over 400 people back then. Wow. Wow. So it wasn't just like one person having a hallucination or something like that. It was, it was actually witnessed. And so that, I'm going to get a picture of that. There you go. Get, get this side too. That's good. But it, but that it was a real resurrection. But yet many deny that it happened. How many do you have people that deny that 9-11 that happened? The, tw the, the Twin Towers and the attack on, on the Pentagon and then the one plane that crashed in the field. That, that the, uh, the Islamic... People deny the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, but that doesn't make it go away any more than if you identify as a pink unicorn, that doesn't make you a pink unicorn. I'm sorry. If you if you identify as some some letter or whatever, uh, yeah, that's fine. If you want to be a, a pretender, it's actually a mental illness, but, but even more than that, it's sin. And so we're here to proclaim that that all of that is perversion, but yet... So is lying, so is theft, so is blasphemy, so is lust, hatred. Now, we've seen quite a bit of hatred from you students, and despite that, we love you. We don't want you to see, we want to see you, any of you go to hell, but sadly, some of you will end up in the lake of fire, in the, the second death. What a horrible thing. That makes me, that just makes me ill thinking about that, because we love you all. We don't want you to die in your sins and, and end up in the lake of fire. That would be that would be terrible. So that's why we're here. We we love you and we want you to be saved. Saved from the wrath of God. By God. By by Jesus, who Jesus is God in the flesh. And we know that you hate God. And all of you believe in God. You even believe in the, the God of the Bible, as I was telling my uh my The 
Bible calls you a fool, but also that you have no excuse, that you do believe in God, but you suppress the truth in unrighteousness uh, because of wicked works in your mind. Wicked works in your mind. What does that mean? Well, it's sin. And what is sin? Sin is transgression of the law, right? Correct? Transgression of law. Sinning means lying, theft, blasphemy, lust, adultery, fornication, hatred, idolatry. And, and many of you are idolaters, as, as I was. You know, I made up a God in my own mind before I was a Christian. And that God would allow me to steal, to fornicate, to lie, to use His holy name in vain. He, he would allow that because He didn't exist. He was actually an idol that I created. I said, oh, well, my God won't judge me because of... You know, and you fill in the blank there. So that's what you could do, friends. You could, you've made up a God in your mind and you could say, well, my God wouldn't judge me because, and then fill in the blank. So whatever that would, I don't know what that is for you, but it could be lying, it could be theft, it, it could be fornication, it could be, how long will we be here? Um, I'm not sure, maybe another hour? You, you gotta bring some friends? I, well, no, no, I was gonna pass out, uh, uh, you gonna pass out? Don't pass no, out. No, no, pass out. Coupons to the sex shop that I work at. Oh, I see you. So you're you're involved in that evil then? Yes. Oh, okay. And you love it, right? I love okay. It. So you don't believe in God, right? I, you know, I don't know. I don't know what I don't know. Okay. So that's very convenient that you suppress the truth and unrighteousness. That's very. That's what the Bible says. So we love. Just like I, I, I love my sin. I love my sin. Yeah, that's I love my sin. That's how I was. So I said, "Oh, my God wouldn't my God wouldn't judge me for that because well, it's a different God." And that's what's called idolatry. You know that the God destroyed whole civilizations because of idolatry. That was like the tip of the iceberg of sin, right? Because when you make up a God in your own mind, then you could justify pretty much anything. Hitler was an idolater. Hitler was an idolater, he, and he did much like the, um, the pro-choice, the pro-baby murder movement today, is he dehumanized the Jews, and the pro-abortion, pro-baby murder culture dehumanizes babies. They say, oh, it's a clump of cells, oh, it's a, it's a fetus, well, fetus just means baby or small child, but use that fetus, that's the word that people use to dehumanize. And we are, we want to humanize, we want to, we want to recognize your humanity. And then the Bible says that it's appointed a man once to die and after that to face the judgment. And man, we don't want you to face the judgment. Not, that would be horrible because you end up being cast into hell. That, that would be horrible. We don't want that. Friends, friends, we don't want any of you end of your precious souls to end up burning for forever in, in hell in the lake of fire what's called the second death Jesus said they'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth where the worm never dies and the fire is never quenched wow that's just that gives me chills just to think about it, it makes me want to want to throw up it's just it's so intense but yet but yet it drives us here and that's why we love you that's why we're here I, I know I know you don't believe that but I'm telling you I, I want you to believe that that we love you and that's I would be I would be so blessed to see you in the kingdom of God each one of you and and because of what Jesus did on the cross that you could be saved from your sins but you must repent and there's a little flow there if y'all how many are taking mathematics you take you got some math majors out there but there's a little equation it's like yeah yeah math majors so so, uh, godly sorrow leads to repentance, which results in salvation. So it's kind of like godly sorrow plus repentance equals salvation. And salvation from what? From sin, death, and hell. And well, that would be awesome. But, you know, you have to really be sorry for your sins. And I'd say most of you aren't sorry for your sins. But that's not my... My job is not to make you sorry for your sins. My job is to point out that sinners can be saved and you can be saved if you are willing if you are willing to trust in only Jesus Christ so, so, so.
And so you can see that this message has an effect here because now we have somebody that's drowning out the message of the gospel. And but you've heard it. You're without excuse, of course. And so you don't need to, to hear it again. You've heard pretty much all I have to say is that you're condemned. You're condemned already. We can't condemn you, and we wouldn't. I would, like I said, I would drag all of you kicking and screaming into heaven with me if it were up to me, but it's not because I love you. But God is a just and God is a holy, holy, just God, and He will not put up with sin. He will not put up with sin. He will judge sin, cast not just the sin into hell, but the sinner also. So. That's the warning. And as somebody said before, <clears throat> excuse me, somebody said before, why are you threatening us? And I said, oh, no, I'm not threatening you. If it was a threat, it would be something that I would be responsible for and capable of. But yet, it's, it's a warning. It's like the weatherman says there's a warning of a hurricane or a warning of um, small craft advisories on the ocean or whatever it would be. A warning. Did that weatherman create the small craft warnings or the hurricane? Of course not. He's just giving you a, a warning. So that's what we're doing. We're warning you that there's a judgment to come and that you'll have to give an account for every, every sin that you've done. But the hope is that you would turn from your sins and trust alone in Jesus Christ today. That would be awesome if you would do that. And then you would have eternal life and we would see you in heaven. Because you may think we hate you, but we don't. And my sign does not say that. My, di my, sign, my, my sign includes the, the word hate, which is an action toward, toward other people, of course, but toward God. And many of you hate God, right? You hate God? How many would admit you hate God? Can I see some hands? Well, I know you hate me, see? So, you know, that's... I hate you. Yeah, okay, okay. Well, I've got, I've got it all on, on film, so if you want to be arrested... Go go for it. So, um, because it's happened before. So, but I but I I would never hurt you, and I don't want I don't want violence. But you hate me, and so yeah. And I I'm I'm 62, so you're gonna beat up an old man. Oh uh, yeah, I bet. So so yeah. So um, I'm gonna ignore that threat, but I don't want anybody arrested. You know, I don't want that to happen to you. I don't want a, a criminal record there. I, I just want you to get the gospel. I want you to hear about Jesus Christ, what he has done for us in dying on the cross. Some of you may have Christian backgrounds, but regardless of that, the truth is still there that Jesus, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody, nobody comes to the Father but through him, through Jesus. So there's no way, not Buddha, not Muhammad, not Krishna, none of these, none of these new age religions, they're all false and they're all soul damning that will lead you to hell. So repent of those religions, repent of your sins and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that times of refreshing will come. Times of refreshing will come. And so you'll have a new life. You won't want to murder babies. You won't want to have sex with whoever or whatever. You'll, you'll want to get married, have a family, do things the right way, do things the normal way, do things God's way. But you have to have your minds changed, right? That's, that's the thing. So um, 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, If anyone who is in Christ, they're a new creation. A new creation. Yeah, that's what we hope for you, friends, because we love you. We care for you. That's why we came here. You know, I took a day off um, today from work, from my vacation. I'm not paid to do this. I actually paid to do this in a sense because I took a vacation day off to do this. And so that's a, we do care. And these other uh, brothers and sisters that are with me did the same. They took a day off. Uh, to come and talk with you about important things, about Jesus Christ and eternal life, about sin, death, hell, judgment, the things that come to warn you that 
There is a judgment to come, but that Jesus Christ can save you from your sins, right? That's, that's what our hope is. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. It's a very positive thing. And we want you to be saved. We want you to be saved from your sins. Because the Bible says it's appointed to man, it's appointed to man once to die and after that to face the judgment. And so judgment means that God will punish every sin, every sin that you've committed. And including blotting out the gospel, which, you know, it kind of steps it up a little bit when because by you know, Jesus Jesus talked about this. He said he said, uh, whoever causes one of these little ones to sin, he was talking about children then, but he said, whoever causes one of these children to sin, it'd be better that a large millstone be hung around his neck and be thrown into the depths of the sea. Wow, wow. Would you want that on your conscience, young man? Would you want that on your conscience? The mistake Keep your distance a little bit, okay? We don't. We don't want you to go to hell. So that that um, categorical representations of women. As soon as that picture of a, a large millstone. Can you can like give me some space? You're in my space, okay? So um, yeah, that's that's a little bit too much too much in my space. And you hear the term glass. So can you imagine that? That's a picture having a millstone around your neck going into the depths of the ocean. It's like it's like God God throwing you into hell. And there's no return. Like if you had a millstone hung around your neck, how how easy would it be to get back up to the surface and live? You wouldn't have any chance. You would sink. You would sink to the bottom with that stone hung around your neck. So we love you. We don't want you to die, man. I, I care about you, sir, and I don't want you to die in your sins. And you maybe you've had a Christian background. I don't know. Maybe you found some reason that you hate God. You found some reason that you hate Christians. I don't know what it is. But, but God ceiling. can reach you, you know, and, and I appreciate... And as long as I have identified I, I as a feminist, it has been because, clear to me that y'all you know, you know, that privileges those who you know are doing. You want to preach a little bit, Mason? Something to make the last. <laughs> we don't need your permission. <laughs> the lovely young kazoo player. Hi. Hello. <laughs> She's offended by our speech, but she doesn't want us to speak. <laughs> Major hypocrisy here <laughs> at SOU. <laughs> SOU loves gay people. Yeah. Oh, we love gay people too. That's why we're here. No, 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 no. God hates the worker of iniquity. <laughs> God, God hates the worker of iniquity. <laughs> See, thank you. The audience sees your hypocrisy. <laughs> but you gotta, you gotta wave slower. You gotta wave slower. Okay, so, so see, look, look, look. When you do that, that, that that's all you're doing. <laughs> you're, you're waving too fast. I just want to be out No, not really. Uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So what's your source of truth on that? Your feelings or the truth of God? 
Because your feelings don't matter to God. God is no respecter of men that he cares what you feel. He wants you to know the truth and the truth will set you free. No, no, that's murder and God hates the murderer. There we are, there we are. There's our kazoo player. <laughs> the juvenile antics at SOU. Worse than junior high. <laughs> but this is a culture we live in that puts more uh, emphasis on feelings than on truth. And this is the kind of chaos and irony and hypocrisy that we have. No, he loves people who repent of their abortion. <laughs> you might as well introduce yourself. Hello. What's your name? No. You don't care? You don't, oh, you're, oh, you're not that courageous. Okay. No, I'm not. I don't say and she has to tell me. Just, you know, she's got the courage to be disruptive, but she doesn't have the courage to let anybody know what her name is. I find that ironic and hypo hypocritic. hypocritical. Yeah, brought out campus security. Here we are live. We've got a group here from the campus uh, LGBTQ community out here. We've got a uh, bunch of different people with different um, arguments and, and discussions. And we've had some good conversations. I've had some great ones. But on, having a conversation with this young lady. This is the mocking of God. Would you like to have a conversation? Is that, is that what you did the conversation with? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, we don't believe in Jesus. That's okay. That doesn't mean it isn't true. Right? Does, it, does what you believe determine what reality is? What does what you believe determine what you No, what God, what God says determines what you should believe. Exactly. I don't believe in God, though. It doesn't matter. You want to know what I think? I believe that all I think is for you, my Satan, and it's meant to deter you from God. Like, how do you know that that's not true? Everyone always says, oh. Messianic Jews. Look it up. Check it out. They believe in Jesus. Yes, You're not a Christian. How did you know that? Because I didn't say that. Know that. Have you read the Bible? I've read parts of it. I was reading You've read parts of it? Do you, know what it do you know what his name means? It was sick. Well, you just were trying to teach me the Bible. You seem to care. So you just, so you're just babbling. You sound like that's what you're doing. With Jesus, oh the angel Gabriel said, you'll name him Jesus because he will save everybody in the world. That's not all sin. He came to save his people from his name. Okay. God did. Really? Yeah, Leviticus, Romans. He did get his ass down from heaven and take he us did. back. He did. No, he, he came did down in life with Jesus. Here. He Why came down in Jesus Christ. And he lived now his he perfect has, life. He doesn't want to be here. They won't even believe if one rises from the dead. 
because Jesus did. He lived a perfect life. He died in atoning death on the cross, and he rose again the third day, defeated death, and he rose again, and still people like you don't believe it. But what's amazing... Yeah, because he's not the I'm ugly! What's, what's amazing... Apparently don't. You literally about you being able to control everybody because again as the world progresses you as a straight white man are now losing rights you want to find anything you can control anything. what do you think i'm controlling today you're literally trying to fucking control women's bodies by exactly. claiming that it's or your body, or fucking choice you guys are being awfully judgmental and hateful towards me yeah, i'm being very huh? so what i'm saying is what i'm saying is you're making the good news is that God can save your soul. He can give you everlasting life. Turn to Jesus Christ and find everlasting life. Repent and believe in Jesus. Are you dying from cancer? Do you know what cancer is? So, so if God, if Jesus cures the cancer. Oh my God. He died to save what? sinners. So if you'll humble yourself and repent humble and admit your lies and theft and hatred and lust and sexual perversion and all of your evil, they'll forgive you and give you everlasting no, life. Repent and believe the gospel. God bless you guys. Wild and crazy day out here. I'm going to start jumping off here. <laughs> I know. I know. But it's been good. But some have had some good conversations. Cool. <laughs> yeah, we're, all, we're all on the same page. Do you have questions? I had this guy right here. Really? What now? Really? What now? There was people that got out on the street to preach the gospel, but it is different out here than it's just being in a church, right? If we were in a church, you wouldn't have to put up with it, right? Do you wonder why we're out here? Well, sure. So, do you think that that's wrong? What? What? Can you tell me what the true belief is? No, I can't. Then how do you? What is kind? What's it mean? What's it mean to be kind? I'm, I'm going to be preaching on this very topic in like two days, so I'm curious what you think it means. To be kind. And I'm just saying, and I'm thinking you should think about. Yeah, I've been live streaming all the time. Yeah, yeah it's cut off. Yeah, it's had to go off and on three or four times. I think it's fascinating that you think that this is kindness. You know? Well, you think that you think you should this kindness? They they willingly came. Of course, they did. They're fucking bred to. My friend talked to them for like an hour and a half. They didn't come out. They didn't come out to college campus with me at four years old. But anyway, that's fine. But I'm just trying. To, I'm just trying to get to that. that he, he just. I know. I know. But he's had that off in a conversation for over an hour. Now he's trying to use it again. Because got people around. But what I'm saying is, here's what. Let me let me define kindness, niceness, loving, friendly. Whatever, whatever you want to, whatever term you want to use, would you not agree that doing kind things, doing friendly things, doing nice things, is doing the very best for someone? No, I've heard this.
Buddhist understanding. That's more like a Buddhist understanding. Buddhist understanding is the negative, do no harm. I don't just want you not to go to hell. I want you to go to heaven. I don't want you to fade off into non-existence. I want you to have everlasting life, everlasting joy, everlasting peace. So isn't that good? That's fine. Do you believe in an objective standard of righteousness or truth? What is, is there an objective standard of right and wrong? And who defines that? You're complaining. I never have. God's defined it. I'm having a conversation. I've had several conversations. A lot of people don't fucking believe in God. Sure. It's not my standards. It's God's standards. Standard. It's your God. Who, who am I forcing? When I walk away from here, are you going to be a Christian? What do you do? I want your name back. Is he a college? Is he a student? Yeah, we are a place. He's a child. He's a child. There he is. When you go to my drink container, did not see that. I saw That's that. That's right, because you didn't listen to me. You just let him go. That's right. Nope. What's that? acting like that. We're being calm and collected and nice. You guys are the ones cussing and yelling. Okay, Jesus Christ says a couple things. Amen. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father. We've missed some good video, but, but now Pastor Brian's, Pastor Ryan's preaching. Please Get understand off. that this is a very exclusive claim of Christ. The way, the truth, and the life. He's not a way. There's not many ways, there's not many truths, there's not many paths, there's two paths, there's one that is wide and leads to death in rebellion against God and his son Jesus Christ, or Sun there's a way, out. the narrow way, that is light and life, that's why Christ would say you must be born again because there's only two groups of people. There are people who have been born once into this world, which we are, if you're here today, you can hear my voice. You have been born. You are born of a woman. Right? You lived and walked and acted in this world. But if you die and you have not been born again, you will be held accountable for the sins that you've done, the rebellion that you had against the one true God of the universe. Christ says you must be born again. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16 talks about two different kinds of people. There are those, all who believe in him will not perish, and have everlasting life. So if you believe in Christ, you will not perish, you will have everlasting life. But if you do not believe, this scripture teaches us, if you do not believe, you will perish. You will not have everlasting life. Whereas John 3.36 says later, The Father loves the Son. Whoever believes in Jesus has eternal life. Whoever does not obey Jesus does not have eternal life. And the wrath of God remains upon him. Again, two groups of people. Here's what matters for your life today. Hear the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was walking with his disciples. And he said, who do you say that I am? And his disciple replied, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And so the question for you today, my friends, and I call you friend because there is a love that we have for you. We would love to see you made right with the Lord of the universe, be reconciled to God, to know life, light, love, truth, and to not be remaining dead in your sins and trespasses. We would long 
for you to know this. But who do you say Christ is? My sign here says that it's appointed to die once and then to face judgment. Hebrews 9, 27. It's appointed to die once and then to face judgment. Friends, this is what will happen. You'll die and you'll be one of two people. You'll either be someone who has believed upon the name of Jesus to be saved and therefore granted as a gift eternal life or you'll be someone who has rejected Jesus, has not believed in him, you're still dead in your sins and trespasses, you're on the wide road that leads to death and on that day you will be found guilty. Jesus Christ talked more of hell than any other person in the Bible. Why would that be? Why would Jesus Christ talk about hell? Right? He talks about hell because he came that we may be redeemed from the curse that leads us to hell. Jesus said that I don't have to come and condemn you. Just like us today, friends. We don't come to condemn you today. Today, if you have not believed in Jesus, you stand condemned already before the holy God of the universe. You know, it's not me that you stand before. It's not me that you stand before. It's not my friends. And you won't be standing before God with your friends next to you. It'll be you alone in the presence of Jesus being declared either forgiven or guilty. The difference, have you believed in Christ or have you not? Okay, my friends? Elsewhere it says in our word that upon the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess. Every knee in heaven, on earth, or under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. It's the last four words. Have you wondered what will happen when you die? This is a serious question I hope that you consider. What happens when you die? Philippians 2 tells us that when you die, you will bow before Jesus. The moment you, just before you enter eternity, you'll bow before Jesus and you will confess that Jesus is Lord. Those words are going to come out of your mouth because every mouth will confess that truth. Now, the scriptures are clear. Some people are going to say, Lord, and assume that they're right with Jesus because they've done something good in their life. Or they've gone to church every now and then. Or they've been a nice person. Or they were accepting of everybody. Or they were a good citizen. Or whatever you think is going to happen. But if you stand before Jesus and you say, Lord, Lord, and He is and your Lord and Savior now, you're going to be sadly mistaken, my friends. And eternity is so serious. Eternity is so serious, you can't go back and do it again. It's appointed to die once and then to face judgment. There is, there is no reincarnation, jumping back, trying it again. There's nothing. And here's how you know that the words we speak are true. Do you wonder? Here's how you know. Because people have nothing to say, but they just try to be loud and obnoxious and make a scene. They just try to make a scene so that you can hear the truth. That's how you know the words we speak are true. So there is one God. There is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. See, she is just yelling. You notice that there is no positive message that she offers. But it's understandable because Psalm 14 says the fool believes in the heart that there is no. We have rights. You do. Yep. We have rights. Yeah, you have, and you and have you the right. Not give us from those rights. Well, rights are you talking about? No, but the right to get health care. Of course. Okay. Uh, so I agree that you have the right to get health care. I do not okay, agree that you have the. But well, you don't have the right to kill a human, is what I'm saying. Human, and that would make no. you possibly a human rights hypocrite. Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that you understand I'm the truth of the thing. Can I just buy a human from you? A human. You don't know what a human is? Do you take science? Uh, no, apparently not because we didn't think on what a human is. So, I mean, human, human DNA, you're made in the image of God. Are you here to love? You know the rules and so why? 
a boca me de fueran y you wouldn't get this from any other guy. I just wanna say, I, I, I don't think I gotta make you understand. Never gonna beat you up. Never gonna let you die. Never gonna let you die. Never gonna make you die. Never gonna say goodbye. Never gonna tell a lie. Never hurt you. All right. Mark chapter 8. Oh, I love this. I'm at the Catholic school. It's like a quiz. Wow. Mark chapter 8. Oh, they came out now. Oh, the angry haters have now come out. Probably is getting close, huh? Especially if something goes crazy, move it around and make sure you get an eye. You're hateful people, go fuck yourself!
song came over. This young lady decided to try to talk to my girls. And then uh, Pastor Brett engaging with this young lady. John's preaching over there on the amp. Girls trying to fly. I don't know why they're trying to use the flags. Can't get above his banner. And it's it's starting to jump off. That little young fella in green, he was just trying to oversing everybody. Oh, Sean's got the signs. And then Brian's been in a pretty good conversation here. And you can see a big flood of kids. They're, paying, they're reading the signs. They're getting gospel seeds planted, and they're and they're hating, but they're they're looking. The seeds are being planted. They're here. They're engaged. This looks like a teacher, a lesbian teacher, probably pushing. I know she came over to try to talk to one of the guys here. But the good news is that lots of seeds are being planted here. The Lord has brought out the people. Praise the Lord. We didn't know. We came out. It was kind of quiet. We're like, well, we almost didn't stay because we came in. And we thought, eh, there's one, John went to do a little scout mission. He said, there's only like one person in the quad. And, you know, maybe we'll just go over to the, go over to the mill. And then Ryan, and then we're like, well, we can give it a shot. And then Ryan pulled in with Pastor Brett, Pastor Ryan, Pastor Brett said, hey, you know, how about we just do like an hour here? And then uh, we'll see, we'll see how it goes from there. And uh, <laughs> we get out here and, you know, for a few minutes, but. I ended up having, within uh, 10 minutes, I ended up having an in-depth conversation with somebody and a couple or a group of about four or five young ladies, and then uh, tried to get over and get the, uh, the camera going because it was dead. And now, we've been here over an hour, and I've had to go out and now go uh, put more money in the meter because we we definitely don't want to leave in the midst of this because we're getting lots of gospel truth into these folks. You, you hear the green kid that he's... As much as he hates us, he's hearing what John's preaching and he's responding to it because he hears it. And look, at that, look at that young man, he's reading the signs. They're reading, they're seeing what is said here. They're engaged with everything. They're, these folks are engaging in with the signs and they're coming down. So the Lord is, the Lord is blessing us today, folks. Look at, look at all these people. And it's all being talked about now. It's all being engaged. Engagement over, over the gospel, over homosexuality, over abortion, all kinds of things being engaged with here now because God opened up an opportunity for us to be here today. So keep praying, folks. This is a crazy time. Pray for us. Pray for what's going on here. Because it is, it is intense out here. And the gospel... The work of the gospel is taking place here today. So.
Um, Pastor Ryan having a good conversation there. I had a good conversation with a pink-haired girl there. And Sean having a great conversation with that young lady there. Pastor Brett having a conversation with this young lady here. Brother John's been preaching with the amp. And, uh, so we're back open again. over asking about John Priest. Thank <laughs> you. 
you get an idea what the fuck that what the fuck that you know trying to get you to find when it put me in the Christ. Now this is who Jesus is. He had enough power to call down every angel from heaven to free him. Jesus was actually allowing Okay, brought up campus security. Here we are live. We got a group here from the campus uh, LGBTQ community out here. Got a uh, bunch of different people with different um, arguments and, and discussions and We've had some good conversations. I've had some great ones. But on, having a conversation with this young lady. This is the mocking of God. Would you like to have a conversation? Is that, is that what you did the conversation with? Is that what you did the conversation with? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So is Jesus. From the, Jesus from the giant. Why would you say you don't believe in Jews and you just said you're a Jew? No, I said I don't believe in hell. Oh, you said you did. You said you don't Jews believe in Jews. Jews don't believe in hell. I'm sure they do. No, they don't. Yeah, I'm okay. a Jew. We don't believe in hell. So From why don't you believe in Jesus? We don't believe in Jesus. That's okay. That doesn't mean it is true. Okay. Right? Because what you believe determine what reality is? Yeah. Well, this what you believe determines no, what you believe? No, what God's saying. What God says determines what you believe. Exactly. I don't believe in God. Though. Doesn't matter. You want to know what believe, I think? I believe, believe that all that I think is for you, my Satan, and it's meant to discourage you from God. Okay. And what is your? Like, how do you know that and you that's believe, not true? Everyone always says, "Oh, Satan puts down stuff to discourage you." What the LGBTQ? It's it's not true. Why do you believe that? Because that's what the Lord is trying to discourage you from God. How do you know that that's what not the truth? What does it mean to be an atheist? It means that I don't believe in you. This is the only suggestion to do that I'm right. I'm still in the Christian church. Yes, Jesus is killing me. My grandfather was, was at the rock thrown at him in New York when he was a child at Easter because all the kids said he killed Jesus. How is that good? How is that related? How is that good? That Who Jesus? said it was good? I never made it. I claimed that was good. Yeah, why are you putting words in my mouth? Why would you believe in Jesus then? Several do. You never heard of Jews for Jesus? A big organization called Jews. For it's a group of people, the Jews that believe in Jesus. They're called Messianic Jews. Look it up. Check it out. They believe in Jesus. Yes, like You're not a Christian. How did you know that? Because I didn't everyone say that. Have you read the Bible? I've read parts of it. I was reading You've read parts of it? Do you know what his name means? Give us six. 
you just were trying to teach me the Bible. You seem to care. I was saying that you're so you just so you're just babbling. You just babbling. Like that's what you're doing. Hey, with Jesus, oh the game, angel Gabriel said you will name him Jesus because he will save everybody in the world. That's not all saying. He came to save his people, people from his name. Okay, God did. Really? Yeah, Leviticus, Romans. He did get his ass down from heaven and take he us did. back. He did. No, he, he came did down in life of Jesus. Here. He Why came down in Jesus Christ. God, and he lived now his he perfect has, life. He doesn't want to be here. They won't even believe that if one rises is. from the dead. Because Jesus did. He lived a perfect life. He died in a Tony death on the cross. And, and he, he rose again the third day. He defeated death. And he rose again. And still, people like you don't believe it. But what's yeah, amazing... Because he's not the I was shit about him. I'm ugly. What's, a, what's amazing... You apparently don't. You literally only give a shit about you being able to control everybody. Because again, as the world progresses, you as a straight white man are now losing rights. You want to find anything you can control. What do you think I'm controlling today? You're literally trying to fucking control women's bodies by exactly. claiming that it's your body. Our body, body. Our fucking choice. You guys are being awfully good, mental and hateful towards me. Yeah, I'm being very huh? So what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, you're making the good news is that God can save your soul. He can give you everlasting life. Turn to Jesus Christ. And find everlasting life. No, Repent, and believe in Jesus. No, Are you dying from cancer? Do you know what cancer is? I know I'm dying from cancer. That's none of your business. Wait, I'm So, so if God, Jesus cures the cancer, the sin, He died to save. Sinners, if you'll humble yourself and repent and admit your lies and theft and hatred and lust and sexual perversion and all of your evil, they'll forgive you and give you everlasting life. Repent and believe the gospel. God bless you guys. Wild and crazy day out here. I'm going to start jumping off here. <laughs> I know. I know. But it's been good. But some have had some good conversations. Cool. <laughs> yeah, we're on the same page. Same page. Do you have questions? I had this guy right here. Really? What now? Really? What now? There are people that got out on the street to preach the gospel, but it is different out here than it's just being in a church, right? If we were in a church, you wouldn't have to put up with it, right? Do you wonder why we're out here? Well, sure. So, do you think that that's wrong? What? What? Can you tell me what the true belief is? No, I can't. Then how do you? What is kind? What's it mean? What's it mean to be kind? I'm, I'm going to be preaching on this very topic in like two days, so I'm curious what you think it means. To be kind. And I'm just saying, and I'm thinking you should think about. Yeah, I've been live streaming all the time. Yeah, it's cut off. Yeah, I tried to go off and on three or four times. I, just, I think it's fascinating that you think that this is what it is. You well, know? Here's, you think that you think you're sure that it's like this kind of they, they willingly came. Of course they did. They're fucking bred to them. My friend talked to them for like an hour and a half. They, 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 they choose, and that is. 
They didn't come out. They didn't come out to college campus with me at four years old. But anyway, I trust that a lot more than I trust. That's fine. But I'm just trying. I'm just trying to get to that that key. Trying to. He just. I know. I know. But he's had that off in a conversation for over an hour. Now he's trying to use it again. Because got people around. But what I'm saying is, here's what. Let me let me define kindness, niceness, loving, friendly. Whatever you want to, whatever term you want to use, would you not agree that doing kind things, doing friendly things, doing nice things, is doing the very best for someone? No, I've heard this. Understanding. That's more like a Buddhist understanding. Buddhists are interested in saying the negative, do no harm. I don't just want you not to go to hell. I want you to go to heaven. I don't want you to fade off into non-existence. I want you to have everlasting life, everlasting joy, everlasting peace. So isn't that good? That's fine. Like, like, when you take that personal belief, a lot of people have like, different personal beliefs. Everyone they want to believe. But, so, like, when you start taking that into the public place, or you start taking that into uh, the legislative level, and banning things based off of your religious fucking beliefs, that's. Do you believe in an objective standard of righteousness or truth? What is, is there an objective standard of right and wrong? And who defines that? What makes you think you're complaining? What makes you think that you're I never have. God's defined it. I'm having a conversation. I've had several conversations. The thing is, a lot of people don't fucking believe in God. Sure. People believe in different gods. Right. Why should they be held to your standards? It's not my standards. God's standards. It's your fucking standards. It's your God. Who, who am I forcing? When I walk away from here, are you going to be a Christian? What do you do? I want your name to back. Is he a college? Is he a student? Or a yeah, I we are a place. He's a child. Like yeah. There he is. Yeah. 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 We're not acting like that. We're being calm and collected and nice. You guys are the ones cussing and yelling. And that's what we got going on out here. Praise the Lord. Been a great time out here.